Hello everybody and welcome to this week's bonus podcast. We are back down south after a lovely trip up north this weekend and that's what we're going to be talking about, isn't it Gemma? Yep. We are, we are, we're going to be on a holiday, we had a little weekend break away to Manchester to do Corey related things, um, which partly meant that I didn't have time to make any notes for another bonus podcast, but also means that, I don't know, probably we did some things that people might want to hear about. That's right. I thought it was right, that's why I said it. And, got to say a massive big thank you to all of our patrons, because you guys made it possible for us to be able to take this lovely weekend break up to Manchester, um, and honestly, we really needed it, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not it's, been great around it's not, here. It's not been the greatest of years so far this year. So um, it was really nice to be able to just take the weekend away. It was so nice. Go to a hotel, yeah. have nice food and meet lovely people one of the and ni- go on a nice Coronation Street one, set tour. I just like, when I left school on Friday after school, it was just amazing because I thought I can't do work over the weekend. Like literally, it's impossible for me to do schoolwork this weekend and I really, really needed that. And also the fact that we were going away to hopefully do something really, really lovely. Um, made it all the more exciting, and it was nice. We had a great time there. We um, it was lovely weather as well, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Um, yeah, <laughs> and it, it it stretched on. I I can't believe that you know Manchester and back in two days. It's the sort of thing that I thought you can't really do that because it's quite far away. Yeah, well, all the Canadians and Americans listening will find this quite funny, but it's really quite unheard of <laughs> to go to travel four hours. Yeah, for a, a weekend. Yeah, like, I mean, it, unless you're going to another country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And guess what? The North is not it's another not country all, all as of yet. Yeah, they're not independent. I was quite surprised how su- how you know close it was to be honest, because we've obviously done the journey many times before. But I'm thinking that maybe we have done it in two legs before, or you know, we've yeah. done the coach when journey. When we add we were... in your dad going to visit your dad, yeah, it adds an extra half an hour, which bumps it over to four hours, and then when you add in all the stops. It starts getting oh, yeah. quite long, but I will point out to you that on the way back, it took us seven hours to get home. Yeah, that's because that's because we did stop up at Dad's house on the way there. So it's well, a bit we also of a long had journey. to stop to get a battery to charge, okay. charge your phone in and fill up on petrol. We did quite a lot of photo taking, especially on the Sunday, didn't we? Yeah. So uh, there's we, a lot of fanning need... around go- taking place on the way home. It's fine. It's fine. Now, the reason that we decided to go on this trip was because well, it was all kind of came out of um, that play that we talked about on the podcast a month or so ago, didn't we? The vignette yeah. play that Sally Ann Matthews was going to be starring in, and you know, no, we, we... she is starring. Well, in she, it. Yeah, so she was going to be starring it, and she is currently starring in it, and that's one of those things that kind of happens up north, and we think, well. We can't go and do that because it's up north. But actually, this weekend has proven to us we absolutely can. And yeah, I'll but tell you, you what, I'm glad we did. Spend the whole of Monday saying you were tired and depressed. I was very, very tired and on mad Monday. I was quite, I was quite life. sad on Monday, um, being back to work again. Um, but you know, it doesn't take away from the, the amazing weekend that we had. So um, I think I don't know. I guess people want us wanted to hear about the weekend, otherwise they wouldn't be listening to this. So um, where should we start? God knows. I know. I'm sorry to drop you in on that. Maybe up to the beginning. We we don't want to go over everything. You don't want to hear about everything, do you? But you'll get to the main well, curry bits. But we had a lovely hotel. Yes, we got to stay in the Dakota. Thank mm. you to everybody who uh, is contributing to our Patreon because it helped us to get a very nice hotel. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the nicest hotel in Manchester, although it is still rated number one on TripAdvisor. I have been in worse hotels in Manchester, as people listen Michael to the has podcast been might in, remember. Now officially, the worst and the best hotel in Manchester. <laughs> I have literally. I've been in the worst and the best hotel. I do I do it all for the podcast. Yeah. So which one would you prefer? I, I think the Dakota does um just just about pip the dodgy back alley hotel that I stayed in that one time during when the Corrie quiz was on. But it was so it was nice. It's it was a fairly very, new hotel. It was really, is it? Yeah, it's really new. It's very trendy. Um, how Surprised was that? they let us in. Well, they nearly didn't, did they? Because we paid for valet parking because we didn't know where to park our car. <laughs> um, and there's literally a car park next to it. That's well, half we, the price. We got there, gone there. We got there, parked in the car park behind it because we couldn't check in for another few hours. We went into the hotel and had some lunch and then drove from that car park round to the front of it so they could put us in the valet bit. When Which really, I yeah, assume we... was parked in that bit. Right? Yeah, I think it probably was. So I think we pretty much um, didn't need to do that. But it was kind of fun seeing all the posh cars in the valet bit. Well, it was it? hilarious because they had a Rolls Royce and two Ferraris, amongst other things, parked at the front. And we tried to get in with our... How old's our car? Well, it's only like eight years old. An eight-year-old. It's not old, super old. Scratched up. It's pretty scratched up and mucky. What, how, what, Corsa. Ca- cor- Vauxhall Corsa. Yeah. And they were like, hmm. They're like, what, why are you quickly... getting us to do... They were very nice. They were really nice, yeah. They the, were very... The, the, the old guy who you said... Who did you say? He looked a, bit like, a bit, looked a bit like John Pertwee. Very, very lovely chap. 
Um, um, so we, yeah, we got into the hotel. We had a very tasty lunch, some steaks. Well, my we steak wasn't very good. I, well, oh no, you didn't like the steak. You had a ribeye and I had a fillet steak, didn't you? Ribeye's not supposed to be tough. It's no. It's very flavourful and fatty, but it's not tough. Yeah. But this and one was. Gemma let me into a little bit of a secret when we went to the uh, the, the, the hotel uh, restaurant to eat a bit, didn't you? You said if, if there are any, um, you know, not so great looking patrons, they like to hide you at the back in the shadowy bit. <laughs> If and that's what a, they did to if us. They, if you go to a restaurant that's quite trendy and you are not well dressed or beautiful, they will put you in the back. Yeah, so they they, they put us right at the way way back. They were like, matter. "Can we put you in the kitchen? Do you mind if you go in the kitchen?" No, mm. didn't submit. Yeah, so yeah. we we kind of had our lunch there, and then went out to the room and everything, and um, it was just a, a fairly decent room, wasn't it? Was a very it? nice shower. Very nice shower. We um, but but the, that we weren't here for that really. It was just a happy coincidence. No, happy coincidence. That's not the right word. Happy. Edition. Because we were there <laughs> to see some curry people we and were. some curry places. So we just lazed about, didn't we, all afternoon because we were absolutely knackered. And then we went to meet up with somebody. We did. We went to meet up with Charlie DeMello. Charlie DeMello, Imran Habib. Yes, because he was, um, he, we, we met up with him at the train station, didn't we? He'd just been down, down been a bit by the south. doing things, bits and bobs. Yes. And then we met up with him at the train station and we had a drink and it was quite funny because a few people asked for his photo while we were chatting. <laughs> it was so funny. Charlie's lovely. You, you, you oh, know, yeah, if you listen to the podcast nice, for a long time yeah. that we're good friends with him. And he's him. so photogenic. Who wouldn't want a photo? I know. Charlie we talked Mello. about kind of this and that and, um, and yeah, just as we were... As we were there, um, yeah, a couple of people went up and said, "Oh, my!" Did they say like my 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 wife watches Coronation Street or my mum watches no. Coronation? Or did they say that they watch? I I just kind they of they were both people that watch Coronation Street. Were they? And the the, the, the second woman said. My husband, my partner said I wouldn't do it, so I'd, I would prove him wrong. Oh, okay, okay. I, I just kind of switch off when that happens because I have, I've been in that situation before with other curry people, and that, and Charlie, like everyone that I've ever been with, was very um, accommodating and lovely with that. Yes. But I think one of the things that um, that made Charlie do this is because the the, uh, the present that we gave him, didn't we? We had a couple oh, yeah. of prezzies for Charlie, um, one of which was a Conversation Street T-shirt, which is um, uh, you know what we give out to our top tier patrons. Prized a possession now. Yes absolutely and if you've seen some pictures from him that evening you'll have seen him wearing it um but also we had a special other present didn't we tell this this is i can't remember if this is your idea or mine do you want to say a bit about this i thought this was charlie's idea I thought you'd oh, yeah. It. <laughs> that's right yeah it wasn't our idea i don't think he realized then, we'd actually give it to him but we did and then i think quite a few people have uh, who also were recipients of prize of awards because this was a an award that was given to him on the podcast. Quite a few people who've also had awards given to them are like, where's mine? Where's my certificate? So <laughs> you don't ask, you don't get. For our own backs here. So what but was this award? We created for him the very special Bobbins Award to acknowledge <laughs> that Charlie Jamalo in the role of Imam Habib has won the Dirty Dog Award. So um, we did so this. All printed out how long ago is this? Two months ago or so that we did the Bobbins Award, month and a half or so ago. So if you haven't listened to that, it's our annual awards. It's basically the Conversation Street Razzies, isn't it? Where we kind of take the mick out of Coronation Street a little bit and uh, and award the things that possibly shouldn't be awarded. Um, a, a, a prizes for but this particular category the dirty dog we do every year for the character who has been um, the most philanderous and yeah. can't keep it in their pantsy characters yeah. off Coronation Street in the air and, and it was I remember it was a choice between Imran and Tyrone last year really that's who it came down to wasn't it but Tyrone had well, he had, you know, he just kissed. He only kissed Alina, her, didn't he? Yeah. But um, Imran had a full-on baby with Abby while he was still going out with uh, Toya. So we gave him the Dirty Dog Award, and at the time, Charlie loved this. He got in touch with us and said, "Thank you very much." Well, Where's the actual award? He also refused to give an acceptance speech until he's been given this award. Oh yes, we're still, still waiting, Charlie. So where is it, Charlie? Still waiting. Okay. Anyway, so we gave him that. He was very chuffed. We made it. it was, I'm, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. We just made it on Microsoft Publisher, didn't we? It's all been printed out nice on card. Yeah, it? printed it on card. And framed. We, yes, we, gold we got a little seal that we bought off um, Amazon. No, don't maybe. give away the secret. <laughs> the it's very exclusive. We had it, we had it made in a gold in a jeweler's. Yeah, I think I, I'm very very pleased with that we've we've had it on our dining room table for the past two weeks, haven't? And every time we walk past it, we're like, oh, that looks good. So we we said to Charlie, oh, we got you know we got a t-shirt and we got a special present, and he loved it. And he was like, oh, I am an award winning actor. And I think that's <laughs> maybe what made the, the the other patrons of the bar that we were in at the time go, oh my gosh, it's Charlie Demello. I want his I want his uh, photograph, please. Yeah. So um, he has already hung it. it on the wall of his flat. We've seen. So thank you very much, Charlie. We're glad you enjoyed it. 
Um, so that that was all in the uh, the train. Well, then we bar, we walked to the to the um, Hope Mill Theatre, yes. which is was the the main reason for our visit, yes. where the the play is is being um, is set is being held. Yeah, and no, I didn't know what to think about this Hope Mill Theatre. It was quite close before going. I mean, because it was quite close to where we were staying, wasn't it? And you know, when I think of a theatre, I think of you know big grand loads of seats, big red curtain, and everything. Uh, but it wasn't oh, yeah. like that at all, was it? It was kind of, it was down a little alley and it wasn't, you want dodgy or anything. <laughs> it, it was a very intimate sort of venue. Well, it's not called Hope Mill Theatre for nothing, is it? it uh, no, it, it, a... it, it, it was an old mill, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the actual, you kind of go in there and there's the bar area with a load of tables and whatnot. And then um, the, the actual theatre part itself is, it's just kind of like a hall, isn't it? It's It was a very dark atmosphere and that. Um flat hall it was like a studio space almost and the seats that we were sitting in were just you know benches that had been put in for the audience and the stage um, was just you know yeah and the the stage was just the floor that you walk across to get from you know the door to the room up to your seats but before we went in there because i don't know we got there what half an hour before whatever we had a drink and um we were joined by another coronation street star millie gibson which is a nice surprise because we hadn't been expecting her had we no, that is right. No, we didn't know that she was going to come and watch because quite a lot of the Cory um, celebs have been um, out to show their support because um, obviously Sally Ann Matthews is performing, but also Debbie Oates, who's a Coronation Street scriptwriter, wrote the 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 script for the uh, performance that Sally was in. Yeah. So this um, this this play opened what Wednesday last week, I think, and and then you saw on Twitter and in, in, in the following days, people like. Did Sally Denever go, I think? Yes. Jane Hazelgrove? Yeah. Um, a few others, others over that first few days. And then it was actually when we were in the um, in the bar at the at the train station, Charlie got a, a text message from Millie saying, are you going to sell show tonight? And he's like, oh, yeah. And so we, so we went along there. We were sitting there enjoying a drink. And then Millie and her mum came over. Both very, very lovely. Oh, her mum, Paula. Yes. Um, they were both absolutely delightful so 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 lovely really nice um, Millie absolute delight really 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 charming young girl actually and um, it was funny because <laughs> Charlie kind of stood up and welcomed them and gave him a hug and everything and then uh, whenever things like that happen because as as we know I am not much of a social person I think to do I need to stand up and hug here? Do, they know don't know me. What do, shall like, I do? I... So they all did their hugs, and I thought, yeah, I'm gonna go up for a hug. So so I, I stood up and I gave I gave um, the mum a hug, and I gave Kelly a hug, and I was like, oh, so nice to meet you and everything. And then we just got talking, and it was just kind of normal and and lovely and nice, wasn't it? And we talked about you know Corrie things and 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 not Corrie things. And about about fifteen minutes into the podcast, the, the, the penny. Podcast. Oh, sorry, the fifteen minutes into our little chat, the penny dropped for Millie. That yes, we were conversation straight. It was quite funny, wasn't it? I can't remember. She, yeah. I, I think I think Charlie had maybe talked to her, said that we were just kind of as we were friends and and, and Corey fans and stuff. But yeah, I, I can't remember how it came into conversation. But then uh, whatever it was, we said Millie was like. But your your conversation street. Oh, I follow you on Twitter. Or your tweets are great. And I said, I said, oh yeah, the Gemma. She does those tweets mostly. <laughs> so she knew who we were. Um, and and they're just very 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 lovely conversation. Could not have been nicer. She was they like were so lovely and yeah. beautiful. I mean, if if only Kelly Nealon herself was quite so nice <laughs> and not and uh, not an evil beater upper watcher. Yes. Well, I told her that um, everybody raves about how lovely she is. Yes, yes. Which is and true. We, and we also did say we're not always the kindest about Kelly on the podcast as well. But yeah, okay. later on we met up with um, Sal mm. after the performance and she was saying that we're a horrible bitch about Kelly and <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but what can but you do? I, I think this is just, I think that Corrie probably sent Millie to the show that night just as part of their tactics to redeem the her. charm offensive. Because we, we have seen the redemption of Kelly Nealon desperately thrust upon us over these last four or five months, haven't we? And now they're going away from the show and actually in real life saying, Millie, go and talk to these people. Make make them love you. And you know what? It kind of kind of helped. Kind of helped. I might, wow. might be watching Kelly in a different light now. Yeah, I am easily swayed. I'm not very good at being... What's the word? I don't know. Unbiased. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally so, um, yeah, the, what time is the play starting? Is it like, I don't know, I can't remember, 7, 7.30-ish? Anyway, so we, we were there. Well, it I was six at... short plays by local female playwrights, yeah. one of whom is actually Hannah Ellis Ryan, who played, pretend, dead, 
Uh, Katie. Katie. Katie McDonald. Who was Hannah. um Liz's child, but not really the Australian. You one. remember that story? Um, that well loved classic. She wrote Go the Down one in History Curry story called the reference. Yeah. Um, and that so the first half was three plays. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them was. There was the, the first one was um, was the lady. It was it was a monologue. There was a, there's a variety. Most of the sh- the plays were oh what, maybe ten... it's called Limerence. Maybe they were like ten minutes long. Were they the plays ish? Well, I don't have the pamphlet with me, so I can't I can't say. Oh, no, I'm going to go and quickly I, get it. Are you, are you gonna you gonna carry on yeah. talking? Right, you carry on. So talking. the first, I'm go to the lounge. The first See you in a one minute. was a like a um, soliloquy or by a um, by an actress who was talking about her experiences with her girlfriend who turned out to be bipolar or have some kind of mental illness issues and she was talking about how uh it was a struggle to understand understand her so that that was pretty good then the second one i'm back was give it to me um <laughs> now this is interesting because they it's got two different names this this play and this is why i wanted you to go and get this program mm. because on the in, on the website it's called Jimmy Mack, but on the program it's called the Demon Dog of Waterhead. Oh, um, and that was interesting because it was about a um, a, a couple whose dog had died and they were like having a wake for it. That was really funny. And the guy who was in that was actually a, a um yes, an actor J- who'd play who'd been in Coronation Street a few times before. Is yeah, 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 yeah. James James Quinn. It was yeah. it was funny because I was watching him and I'm thinking, do I do I know this actor? Because obviously he the... had a really um. It, he had a big presence, didn't he? Yeah. Very confident. And it was quite funny because it was a comedic play and these two characters were kind of bickering with each other and they were just really commanding and um, brilliant. I think all the actors were brilliant. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I agree. Absolutely this, this chap, I was... Well, I mean, obviously, Sally Ann Matthews was the, the star, if you like, of the show, the, the name that most people would know. But this guy was like... I know him. I know him from somewhere. I know. I know him. And it wasn't until the inter the interval that I I looked him up on uh, on my phone. And it was like, ah, oh, he was a he was a copper off of um off of uh, of Corrie. He was one of the detectives. He he was last in it like January last year. Um, but he's yeah he's done a few other roles in Corrie as well. But I I knew I knew him from somewhere. But he was good. That 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 particular play was probably the weirdest one of them all because it involved some of the characters you know dressing up in dog suits and things and um. But it was still kind it of fun. It was, it was lighthearted, yeah. lighthearted. It was and easy to follow, which is always good for me. A few, and some of the actors will be in each other's plays. Yeah, and, a little bit. Um, while the while the performances are going on, the actors sit around the outside watching. Yeah, the, the it was like there was a little audience around the outside, yeah. um, so they have to watch every day. Then the final one, I this made me cry. Uh, this is called Perspective, and the main character is written by Alex Keelan, but the main actress and it was called Emily Hayworth and she was bloody amazing. She was really good. It was just a it was it was uh just her relating her experiences as sort of a woman combating internalized misogyny and talking about the workplace and how um yeah, I won't. It was so good. All of these. We don't, we like, don't want to spoil brilliant. them too much, but we do understand really that the vast majority of people listening to this go. won't be able to get to see these, it. I really kind of want some of these to be turned into audio plays or something. And some of them definitely could be because yeah, it was just you know a monologue or two characters talking really. But I, she I, was so she was the, she was she able was, to switch from the comedy yeah. to to the drama so so quickly. That they it was were all great, really clever. That was a bit complicated for my little brain you didn't to get understand. What happened. No, Gemma no, had I'm to explain crying. it for me. Right. After. Oh, women's lot so hard. <laughs> but I could tell and she like, was why, a good actress. Why is that lady so mad about? everything anyway yeah. right that then we had a little um little interview in- interval went to the middle had another chat had another drink that was that was me charlie millie paula all together lovely and then and actually, was there as well i suppose yeah i was there um <laughs> actually the first one was tangled which was the one starring at Sally and matthews written by debbie oates so we didn't know what to Eddie expect Rose. from this did we sal had no. said i'm gonna be wearing a costume she's like you won't believe it yeah and, and so, i did and- see her sneak through because the um the bar yeah the bar is right between the backstage area and the the stage so you have to walk through to get to the the performance area and i could see she's wearing a red jumpsuit i was like what's this what's going on and when we went back into the room it was all dark yeah. wasn't it and i was waiting because in the first half like Gemma had said earlier all the actors in the plays that weren't currently being on were sitting around the outside of the room 
for, for that half at least. So I went into the room expecting to see Sal you know, sitting around the outside of the room and I couldn't see her. So we all went back to our places in the dark and then when it was ready to start, kind of this light, this spotlight switches on on Sally Ann Matthews perched on top of a step ladder. Yeah, this is spoilers. This by is the way. total spoilers. Please don't, if you any chance that you're going to watch this, do not listen to this, honestly. But yeah, she was perched on top of a step ladder in um in this red jumpsuit, a Shrek hat, and she's got a parachute attached to her, which is going up to the ceiling, caught along like this this joist or crane or something. And she's just there screaming as her first line, yeah. isn't she? It's really good. She's so a really effective yeah. um entrance to the second half. Yeah, and it, it just goes to show you what a great um actress Alan Matthews is because this character is not at all like Jenny. Jenny's very prickly and um sarcastic and uh mm, defensive whereas this the character that that sal played in this was very sweet and open because you have open i was gonna say because you're doing a it was another monologue yeah um so she kind of has to tell us what her thoughts are Mm. and she's talking about what led her to dangling off this tower yeah yeah the, the, the concept is that she's just done a skydive yeah. for charity for a heart charity and she's got herself caught on a building and while she's waiting to be rescued she's just kind of mulling over and and, and like, chewing I, the cut fat about, about life really yeah how did i get here what led me to and this making a few revelations and uh about herself and coming to terms with some um things that she had been struggling with perhaps yeah and it's but it was very um it was really good. It was so heartfelt. Was, and like the like the actress from the first half that we particularly liked, the, there was a really good mix of uh, of the serious and oh, the comedy, she did it wasn't so there? Well. So so good. It I was really loved funny it. in places. And, uh, it, I I can't not be biased, but I, I think it actually was the best of the six plays. I'm not just yeah. not just saying it. And again, it Sal. I really think that this could have been this could be a um an audio. Oh yeah, definitely. Play. definitely. I would love. I would love to. I'd love to be, I would love other people to listen to it. That's how you can tell that it's good when you wish that you could share it with other people. Mm. Like, I really wish everybody who is could go got the chance to go, but unfortunately that's not not happening if it because of geography. Mm. So mm. sad. So that was that was actually brilliant. I love that. And there was some mu- good music in it too, wasn't there? It was part of the story. Maybe that music that was in there. She was talking about the songs that she was listening to and what they oh, meant to her. I'm just thinking about one of the plays later that played Spice Up Your Life as part of it. And I'm pretty sure, and maybe she can correct me if she's listening to this or not, I'm pretty sure when they played Spice Up Your Life in the, in the sixth one, Sal gave me a look. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is for you, Michael. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I, think so. I don't think it's put for me, but you know what I mean. Right. So, the, yeah, the fifth one was um, the Sal and Ellis Ryan's one, wasn't it? It's called The Reference, and it was about... A, a woman is coming back to a place that she used to work at to ask for a reference. And it's a very difficult and awkward situation for everybody. So that's quite cringy to watch. That had a really great receptionist character, she didn't it? She was played it? by was... Amy Chung. Yeah, and, and it, she really reminded me. She was me. so sweet. If anyone's watched Absolutely Fabulous, she reminded me of the girl that Sappy's friend. Yeah, she it's like very... a really nerdy, over yeah. eager to please kind of swatty girl. Yeah, yeah, she was great. And, and the like boss. shy, but also kind of weirdly um uh, forthright yeah and the boss was very kind of devil wears she Prada, was brilliant yeah she was um, like professor super... umbridge sort of yeah yeah i thought that, that it i i found it a bit confusing but i, I did a bit and this was very strong i i thought it went on a bit too long that one and i think maybe it was also a, a symptom of the fact that this was the fifth out of six well, you one were like, I was... i've seen sally and matthews i'm going now yeah i can't really sneak out because we're in the middle of the theater here no, um, no. I, I, was, I, would, I, 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 no, no, I just, I, I wanted to see the whole thing, but, but I was, I'm, you know, I don't have a great attention span for You're things. You're also not very intuitive and no. you don't pick up on, no, like somebody has to go, this is a monologue about <laughs> menopause, <laughs> otherwise you don't get it. Yeah. But, right, uh, and that then was had, good. Um, and then the sixth one was Halal Hens. Um, and that was written by Zoe Iqbal, who was also in the in the play, wasn't mm. she? Yeah, she was good. Um, and this was about a group of um, Muslim women who go on a hen night to Blackpool and have to deal with some uh, and more revelations prejudice. And, and prejudice re- yeah. and yeah, the prejudice of um, of society as a whole, but also their own community against yeah. against certain people within that community that one came to me yeah that one to me came across as the more light-hearted of them all it wasn't like 
I mean, the, the the demon dog of water head with with the with the dog things that was just a bit weird and funny. And this wasn't weird and funny. It was just kind of like yeah, that, like, there there was a serious element to it when we find out something about a family member of one of the people in the hen party. But um, it was kind of the the most relaxed one and uh, and again fairly easy one to to understand just to end the, the thing off so I very much and they played Spice Set Me Life such a fun way to spend an evening it's not at all the sort of thing that we'd normally oh, do oh no not at all like, I didn't I, know what to expect beforehand honestly I had no idea I go to the theatre with my friends to see musicals really or pantos at Christmas pantos but I don't really go to see plays no no not at all like, where's I, this the is song not the where's so- the song <laughs> this is not the sort of thing I go to at all and you know six six short plays very intimate venue I don't think I've ever done anything like that before um, but yeah, Highly had recommend a it. really, Brilliant. really, really and great the, time. The tickets weren't that expensive. Oh, no, they barely anything. What, fourteen pounds, fifteen pounds, something yeah. like that. So that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and the then... sound was brilliant. And so when the when it was all over, we all went back and sat down and had drinks. And um, Sal came and chatted, and we all had a nice time. And that was so. That was my favourite bit of the weekend. Just it was. after the show, me, you, Millie, Millie's mum, Charlie. Oh, yeah. And um and and Sal all just having a, a chat and we were like they're just talking about and Sal is this always and lovely that. yeah and she's so brilliant and so beautiful and so is Millie and so is Charlie they're all just lovely so people Gemma. but they're all acting <laughs> so they could be horrible maybe they're horrible I don't know <laughs> I, I mean they're fooling me and that's that's all that matters really but we ended up chatting there for about an hour or so we afterwards got kicked didn't out, we, we yeah we should. did get kicked out we were closing the venue out. at the end of the night I think it's Charlie's fault. Um, and, we, and then that's when we took the photos as well, didn't we? So some of the pictures that you'll have seen on Millie's Instagram maybe were taken by the fair hand of Gemma. I am really good at taking photos and the sad thing is I don't show up on film. So I can't be in the, in the pictures. No, but you're good behind the camera, aren't you? <laughs> so you took you took some of Millie and Sal and then I was like, oh, we need to get one of us. So I, so I went around there as well and then we were like, oh, Charlie's got to get in as well. Now, Charlie, by this point, had gone into the uh, toilets and changed into his Conversation Street t-shirt, hadn't he? Yeah. Because I'd said at the beginning, look, if we're going to give you this this certificate of your Dirty Dog Award, we need to get some photos of presenting it. So that's where the picture of me, Sal, Millie and Charlie all pointing at the certificate came from. And then I said, oh, we got to get one over there where we're it's just me handing it to you and shaking hands and everything so we went and did that and it was all in good fun um and yeah then then we get kicked out at the end of it um and then we went home and we nearly got uh murdered what happened no, we, got... didn't. we just walked home and it was quite dark home in and the it dark. was dodgy um but that's okay. fine because we're from dodgy parts ourselves and then when we got back we hadn't had any dinner and it was too late and we had to have um what did room we do service. for dinner oh yeah we did we had room service we yeah, had the... gloopy a uh, soup. Yeah, I think the original plan was to to go out with 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 the guys after the show, but it was just too really? late. Well, I'd, I'd said to Charlie that we might go out somewhere. Well, anyway. he was tired. He's he's getting old now, isn't he? Yeah, oh, yes, he's getting on a bit. That that Charles. Um, so we so we went back and we had some funny soup. Uh, what else did we have? We had a panini. We had a panini. Oh yeah, it was a steak panini, wasn't it? Yeah. So fancy, so fancy. And then had a very nice sleep in the very nice bed in the very nice hotel. And a nice shower the next day as well because the water, they've got soft water up north, haven't they? They do. I'm so jealous it's, of it's your nice. soft wa- northern water. Yeah. And then yeah. we had a nice breakfast in the hotel, didn't we? Yes, yes, tasty stuff. Um, I, I had some nice pancake snacks and you had... had a full uh, English. You had a full English, yeah. With, with bean couturier. soup. Yeah. There was yeah. a lot of liquid in those beans and we had some fresh fruit and some charcuterie and some um, pano chocolat. Yeah, and then we and then we went and um, and got the car, <laughs> which they which they didn't want to have sitting with the Ferraris and the Rolls Royce. They just bunged on some double yellow lines just outside of it for us. They did they? give us two bottles of water. Yeah, they did. They which did. Was really it was really nice. Worth, that was. I'm glad we spent. How much is it? Thirty pounds, thirty five pounds, or something. Pounds. Like, <laughs> just because we could, we, we couldn't, we didn't know when we there was a car park Michael, that we could park in. But the thing is, in. though, how many times have you gone that? When you go to a hotel, you're like, do you have parking? And they didn't have parking, but they had valet parking. Yeah. And well, the I wonder if they'd had like gone... a secret underground lair or something. The amount of times we've gone to Manchester to, to and tried to park and had no idea where to park and had difficulties parking. And if we do find somewhere to park, it costs the earth mm. and it's not overnight parking. So we really didn't have a choice. But if you want to ever go to Manchester by car and stay at the Dakota just go to the, the car park. Yes, that's the recommendation. Literally but e- equally, if you want to drive to Manchester and you just want something to park, that was actually decent, wasn't it? It was fairly cheap. I can't remember uh, where it was, though. 
Well, it was a, it was a juicy, juicy street, wasn't it? Because this That's this is a, the this is the thing that confused centers. us yesterday because we were watching last, last night's curry me. with with Adam and uh, and Lydia going to Juicy Street Shopping Centre, and we were like, hang on a minute. Juicy Street, that's in Manchester. We were literally on a hotel there, and in a hotel there. I didn't see a shopping centre. But they made it up, didn't they? They made it up for Corrie yesterday. So there you go, Juicy Street, it's there. Decent parking. I think it's City Park, City Park, there you go. 75 that's a, that's a Dale Street, Manchester. Yes, now we had something special planned for that day as well, which was the Coronation Street tour, but we didn't go there first. We wanted to take a little detour, didn't we? We did. Down to, um, I can't remember what the name of the street is, it's so bad. You find out for me? If you listen to last week's... What's the um, name of the church? Uh, I said Clement's Church. That's right, Oranges and Lemons. If you remember listening to last week's bonus podcast, we talked about Archie Street, which is the place that Coronation Street had been based on. Tony Warren had been driving the streets of Salford and was like, that's what I want Coronation Street to look like. So it had your corner shop, the row of terraced houses, the church at the end, which Coronation Street originally had, allegedly. And it, yeah, it was called Archie Street, but it was demolished in 1971 and replaced with whatever the street's called now that Gemma's desperately trying to find out what? on her that's really doing anything, thank you very much. Just casually. Greenwood Terrace. There we go, there we go. So we thought, well, let, we, we've never been there before. And we, you know, we've done quite a few Corrie tours of Manchester over the past decade, but we never actually bothered going to this place where Archie Street was. But a couple of weekends ago, Paul from Corrie Art on Twitter, he did a little tour of Manchester, didn't he? And they, he yeah. went there and I thought, oh, why not? Let's go there. So we, we, we went there. It was We were a little tight for time because of we had our Corrie tour booked. Uh, but we, we went and had to look at the church. Annoyingly, there were some people standing outside, so we couldn't get some it's like, people-free come on, photographs. It's Sunday. Why are you hanging around outside the church? Go and have, <laughs> go and have a lie here. Exactly. <laughs> 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 and we walked, we walked down the road... And it, and um and we tried to like get some shots that lined up with some of the old pictures of Archie Street and you know I was just thinking ah oh, blimey you know I I was thinking of the the photo shoot that um Jean Alexander and Bernard Dewins had had there um, at one point and thinking oh there's there's some history in this street it's a shame that it's gone and it's it, I mean, it didn't really look anything like it had done but um yeah well, it, at least we can say we've been there now can't we that's right that's and interestingly before. enough St Clements um is actually. A seven minute drive to Media City, which is exactly the same distance as probably where I think the old set used to be. Oh, is it? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Kind yeah, it of. was. It was. It was very. Because I thought it, this is this is a bit weird. Why is this? Why is this the like? Why is the uh, inspiration for Coronation Street literally five minutes drive from where the new set is? That's weird. That's a really weird coincidence. Yeah, and, actually, and if... it's because. It's not that far away from the other place. <laughs> mm, not too far away from Key Street either, no. So yeah, that was that was quite nice to go to. And then we had to rush through uh, through Salford over to Media City to get to the tour. And we um we took one wrong turning in traffic, which made things a little bit late. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, we've if you remember uh, when was the, when did we do the tour? Two thousand and eighteen, maybe. We did the we did the Media City tour once. And if you remember that, we were fairly critical about the way that yeah. it was organised um, and the price of it, which is £35 per person. You can only buy at least two tickets. No, you keep saying that, but it's not true. OK, that's what I thought, but I'm wrong. Um, and so we wondered whether, you know, in the intervening years, now it had been closed well, for a bit for COVID, was it any better? Our main issue was you pay £35 and we were on the last tour of the night and we got rushed through. We were there for about 40 to 45 minutes and it was literally... Just get get yourself down. Well, yeah, down when we went, it felt like they were trying to get rid of us last yeah. time, honestly. Also, a lot of the time on the tour was spent actually getting to the Corrie Studios. Because in Manchester, you've got your Media City on one side of a footbridge. That's Salford, the yeah. So, yeah, Media City, Salford, yeah. And then the other side of the footbridge, there's a load of other you know BBC buildings and stuff. And it's there that you meet your tour guides. So they spend yeah, a lot of time walking plaza. over the bridge before you even get to Corrie. Yeah. There's a big plaza where the tram stop is and all the cafes and restaurants and bars and the main studios and everything. And it used to be that you would get, you would meet up inside a building there with your tour guide and he would walk you or she would walk you across. And it takes about five minutes or so mm. to get there. And then you'd walk in through the back entrance, which is the pedestrian access to the, the, to car, the, park. To the car park. And then you go on pop your tour it, from there. To, to the so street. when we start, when we, um, well, going on this tour on Sunday, we went to the place where you used to start the tour off. And inside this building, 
is um, it's like a little the Rover's 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 facade Rover's and other yeah. bits of Coronation Street memorabilia and stuff. So it looks like if you were to start the tour there, that would be where it would be. But it was all closed up and there was no sign of anybody. So Michael said, OK, well, we must have to go to the actual set to start there. And I was like, oh, can't we bother to walk all the way over there if Dude. we're going to have to walk all the way back again? <laughs> so it was a bit, a bit of a grumpy mood. No, I was also not anticipating you. them to do a good job. So I went into this with bias in my mind and it was totally fulfilled in the first... <laughs> in the first like, instance. Like 20 minutes or so. On the whole, can we just... Spoiler, it was a much, much, much better tour than much last time. Value but they did not give us the first good impression, did they? And I will pass on to my professor of anthology, <laughs> Gemma, <laughs> to, uh, to explain what was wrong with it at the beginning. Well, first of all, when you're walking to the set... From Media City across the bridge, you can see that there's an entrance to get in, which is the pedestrian entrance. And there's actually a little sign there, one of those sandwich board signs, and it's right up the furthest way it could be, away from you, right at the very front of the gates, next to a bunch of what would you call them? Um, barriers that yeah, look yeah. like it's crowd control for a queue. So we thought, oh, okay, it, you're going in the same way you used to go in, so you must have to queue up here. You have to walk all the way along the length of the Tony Warren building to get to this entrance to see. It says, not here. You're in the wrong place. <laughs> go go somewhere else. So then you have to turn around and walk all the way down. And as we were walking, there were about three or four groups of people that I had to say, if you're for the tour, you're going the wrong way. You have to follow us because they didn't know either. So mm, I think there's a glaring error. Yes. Went around the side, all the way around the front to find a massive queue of people. So it's like, okay, we must be in the right place. So we get in the back of the queue and at the front of the queue is one single woman who has an iPad. Everybody's got QR codes and tickets. So what does she do when you, you get you get to there to say who you are? She writes your name individually into her iPad to find out whether you've got a Rather ticket. Rather than scanning our Rather QR than scanning code. anything or having a list of people, she has to type everything in individually. So that's taking ages. People are standing there waiting. You're supposed to get... To and getting turned away if they... Listen, <laughs> oh, you have on. to get there a quarter of an hour before. So we were still in our time, but we didn't get there in time to start our slot properly. So we had to go in the next slot no, because we didn't how know where the, the entrance queue... was. First of all, we didn't know where to go because they didn't actually tell you anywhere. They give you a postcode on the ticket, which will take you to the entrance. But you can't get there by car that way because there's nowhere to park your car. You have to park your car in Media City and walk. So why give a postcode? Anyway... So we're standing in this queue, waiting, waiting, waiting. There's a couple in front of us, an older couple, who get to the front of the queue. And the woman, like, has a massively long conversation with them and then makes them go and stand at the back of the queue. The man's swearing and effing and blinding and getting really peed off. <laughs> we get there and she's like, oh, OK, yeah, don't worry. Um, we'll go on the next tour. So we go through. And then five minutes later, this poor bloke who had to go to the back of the queue comes in as well. So I, my only assumption is that he was in the next slot across. But the time that he was at the front of the queue was like one minute two, literally one minute to 11. And if he was in the next slot, it's the only thing that makes any logical yeah, sense I did, to me. I did, oh, that's all I assumed. Was, so he had to go to the back of the queue because he was one minute early. Mm. And then he gets in there. We get our little wristbands, don't we? We get had a light little blue wristband, Corrie Tour wristband. According very to nice. which um, tour you're going to be on. And it's so well organised that it doesn't matter what time you turn up. So, <laughs> so I was a bit confused because when you booked it, you book in 15 minute slots, didn't you? So yeah. I assumed that there'd be just a small group of people. Every 15 minutes a tour would be going away. No. Nope. No, no. So, you, so in the Coronation Street set, in the main entrance for cars... There are security gates, and this is why they use that part to be Highfield Prison because it looks high security because it is. Mm. So you have two sets of gates. There's an interior and exterior. So basically, double gates for cars to go in and out. So when you're waiting for your tour to start, that's where you wait in a massive group of about fifty to a hundred people. You're not told around. how long you're going to be waiting you know, for. You basically or what's get happening. your. You basically get you. When you get in, you get checked in and, you, and they go, go and get your wristband. So you get your wristband and then they go, go in there and you, you get just stand around. In. There's nowhere to sit apart from a very low set of stones and one bench. And so there were lots of Coronation Street fans who wanted to go on this tour who were much older or had different abilities and capabilities for standing for periods of time. And they weren't catered for, in my opinion. And when you get into this bit, you're milling around the area, which is in between 
the, the two the, gates the car gates and what happens the car the, the gates open and a car drives right through the middle everybody <laughs> has to walk out of the way so this car can drive through the center of the crowd now i don't know much about health and safety but i don't think a car driving through a waiting area is well thought out and i don't think when they were doing their little forms they put that in there no also, maybe not there's there's toilet facilities but the women's has two cubicles and two urinals which is useless and the male toilet a bloke told me only had one cubicle in it mm. so there's a massive queue of women standing around trying to get into this toilet because they can't wee in a urinal uh, and all the meanwhile we're thinking how long are we going to be standing here so our tickets had said 10:45 on and it's like 10 past 11 and we're still in this little herding area aren't we ready to ready to be told okay you can go in now yeah we had we were it was two, they were a couple of minutes late to come and collect us which i guess is fine um and then it was about quarter past eventually yeah, that, that, that that we ended up going Dave, and then the tour guide came along he was great from then on it was fine from yes. then on it was perfect everything was the really only the only well thing i would say that. was there were far too many people on each tour because i mean we are we were the 1045 group and and then there must have been an 11 group and 11 15 maybe so yeah there were how many do you reckon like 40 there was 50? 40 pe- 40 50 people in each tour group and at one point there was three groups on the main street milling mm. around security guards looking very nervous there was only two security guards to make sure that everybody was not touching things they shouldn't be doing or fiddling with things or leaving things that they shouldn't have left and trying to also separate the groups out because at one point somebody from another group wandered and started heckling our tour guide and then wandered (laughs) off again um nobody checked anybody's bags to see whether we were bringing stuff in or taking stuff out which is really bad um Uh, Yeah, and there was lots of mixing. But, you know, we were given a massively long amount of time. So we we would stop at certain points and he'd be like meet me at Audrey's at this time of, well, but yeah all... but before we went in he did a, a big long spiel about welcome to the Cory tour and a bit about the history of the program it's very interesting and he you could tell he was a seasoned tour guide he knew he knew his and he was his... having a good time and he was enjoying himself and he was knowledgeable yeah and everybody was having a great time I think it was very it was very unfortunate that they had a very such poor organization at the at the start and it's yeah. not the tour guides fault no, because no, they're no. not the managers but whoever's in charge of organizing it needs to be kicked up the bum mm. so you, you go in and it's almost um where the victoria street kind of ends isn't it but you don't go in victoria street yet you go down past a little bit of freshcos where there's two freshcos yeah. bands parked which is really cool because i don't think we'd seen those last time and you go down a long wall which has got these really well made freshcos posters which they must use you know as a backdrop i think that was the bit if you remember from a few weeks ago where emma was spying on john pushing his trolleys that bit we were walking down, weren't we? And, I, and we we posed. I I posed for a few photos. Gemma was the official photographer because I hardly had any battery left on my phone. Uh, and then that takes you down past like some fresh goes trolley. Um, what do you call them? Like little shelters where you put your trolleys. And and because we were taking photos of literally everything, quite often the tour guide would start talking and and we'd be trailing along afterwards, which was all fine. Um, and then eventually we get down to the, the the Viaduct Street end of Coronation Street. We've all just been Where outside so is. far. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he gets us to all sing the Coronation Street theme tune as we walk in. I was still grumpy at this point. You were still grumpy at I'm this point. I'm not going to participate in as this we go ritual into Viaduct Street. So then they, he stops just outside um, the Allahan's shop, does another talk. Um, and then says, right, you are free to explore wherever you want for the next 15 minutes or so. And this was brilliant because the last time we did this tour, like we said earlier, we were just shepherded along by our security guard and the, and the tour guide. And we didn't really have any freedom, did we? But this was utter freedom to yeah. go and do whatever you wanted. You had about 20 minutes yeah. to, to look about. We were told things like, you know... Don't disturb anything if you see, what do you say, if you see some dust, don't write your name in it, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, and so, and, and there were various uh, taped off areas. So if you're going down Viaduct Street with a bistro on your left, you keep going past the, the, the garage um, and then you want to go on to Brewery Lane, you couldn't. Yeah, they used tape that had dressed set written on yeah, it. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think it I was think, a dressed no, set. I think it was just a don't a come in here. Going on there. Yeah, and then, and then a few bits down the Rosamond Street viaduct, there was some more of that tape. Um, but on the whole, you could literally go anywhere. One thing about the organisation, again, that I 
that could have been done better is he didn't say, you know, don't go past this point. Well, he tried to, but you didn't know that that would then be part of the tour. Like, no. he, like you go, oh, I better quickly look at this, otherwise I'm not going to get a chance later. But yeah. you didn't realise that you would get a chance. Because... Yeah, we were told, wait to Audrey's. But I kind of went past Audrey's and I started having a look down Rosamond Street and everything. And he said, right, everybody, my group come. And I was like, no, I've not seen everything yet. But it was fine because there was then the next stop. It's like, right, let's have a walk around Rosamond Street. Meet me outside of uh, Preston's Petals. OK, right now you can go and have a look at the brewery gates. You can go and look at Prima Donna and everything. Meet me outside of this community centre. And I think in the second half, there were a lot shorter times that we could explore weren't there because in the first half like that that had the rovers and everything and that's where they had the professional photographs being taken which again last time we went on the tour wasn't running um so you could pose outside the rovers you could pay i don't know how much for the picture of it in the shop later we didn't do that um, well i the, the main p p uh draw of that is that you get your photo printed out i think yeah yeah and exactly you won't, you're not going to be getting that um, like, like you're not going to print your picture it? out unless you make a massive effort yeah. Um. So that's nice. Yeah, that, that is a nice thing to do. It did. It did mean though that it was difficult to actually get a photograph of the rovers because most of the time there were other tour guests standing outside there, weren't there? And unless you want somebody else in your rovers photo, you have to choose your times very carefully. So we we had to look around and we try. I was trying to find out like, what hadn't we seen before. What's changed since twenty eighteen? And you got like Gemma's and Chesney's new stable door was there. I think the Bailey's door we had seen yeah. before, hadn't we? Sally had no, a I new door. No, I don't think we saw the, the Bailey's. I thought we did. Well, Sally, Sally's front door I'm was sure. the main exciting. We've definitely been there since the Bailey's have been on the show, though, haven't we? Because we saw Trevor mm, Trevor know. George yeah, there. Um, and um, one weird thing that was there was that Fresh Goes 4 poster still underneath yeah. the viaduct that goes underneath, or the, the railway arch that goes down Rosamond Street. So if you, like, turn right at the Rovers, go down the railway arch, then you've got a burger... Um, poster and then yeah photoshopped a high heaven dolly rose campbell and sam aston holding these babies from how long two three years ago yeah. odd that that's be still there, there. Those kids graduate yeah. university very strange that that's not been taken down i can only assume it's still there just to make people going past going huh remember that i don't know or maybe they just can't be bothered to take it down um but um, yeah, we, we stopped and we started and, and, the, and the tour guide was telling us it was a mixture of filming trivia and do you remember when this happened on the show factoids, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so it didn't have a definite focus, but I, I didn't mind that. I liked that it was a bit of this and a bit of that. Um, but they, they had a few um, I don't know, props, for lack of a better term, that you could see like um, some streetcars taxis were just parked outside streetcars, weren't they? Looking all nice and shiny. That was cool. Um, they had what else was there? So down Victoria Street, oh yeah, Shuttleworths was new, wasn't it? Obviously the funeral director, so that looked very smart. A lot narrower than I was imagining it to be, even though I had seen it when it was a what was it, a council building. Yeah, it obviously. seems like it should be bigger on the street, but um, yeah, it was very tight looking, and we could see inside all the different things in the in the window and everything. The little alley that was down there was that had one of those bits of tape. Don't go down Villains Alley. Um, and Maybe Seb's guard. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. Maybe you're right. And um, oh, yeah. And there was also a board down the um, the Ginnel, Ginnel wasn't there? Yeah. So you could go un underneath the arch to the to the left of the Rovers, round past Maddie's mural, and um, the Rovers. You couldn't go into the Rovers smoking area, but because there was a board there. And then if you wanted to go any further than like number one, you couldn't. Um, so yeah, we saw we saw Shuttleworths, we saw um, Seb's Memorial Garden. Well, well, it doesn't have the big picture of Seb there anymore. I think that was just there for one episode, wasn't it? Um, so that that was quite cool. And I still in my head get mixed up where everything is down that down Victoria Street. So hopefully I'll remember now. Um, and then they get you to um, Victoria Court. And that's where you can go left and see the police station set, which obviously is not there in universe the police station is supposed to be a long long way away but it's actually just round the back of um the victoria court set um there's also an actual weatherfield crown court yes facade, just opposite the there, side, yeah. which i don't think is supposed to be that close no no i don't think so either. it's just um another thing that they can film and weirdly enough um so the weatherfield police station is all in in blue yeah and the court um is in like a bright red but mm. the the 
above it are bright blue windows. And I don't know why. No, well, they... I, th- I don't think that was always a court. I think when we went there before, that was also they a blue door and they them, painted yeah. it to say this is this is the court yeah. building here. But not the actual court building because we actually drove past one that they sometimes use as Weatherfield Crown Court later that day, didn't we? Uh, but down that bit of the street, the, a couple of Ed's vans were parked. Um, you could also look down and see, you know, the little Kitchener Street, which runs behind Roy's Rolls. Um, that was blocked off, wasn't it? You couldn't go all the way down there. No. Um, and then there's like that a... was where Seb was kicked. Well, no, no, no. It, there was like there was there were two streets. There was a left one, which was literally yeah. right at the back of Roy's Rolls, and that was where um, like Kelly was was uh, was on drugs. Oh, and, and also and um, where the nightclub was. Where the nightclub was from a few weeks ago where Amy was spiked. And then to the to the left of that, so to the right of that, you got a wall. And on the other side of the wall, that was the road that is just used as a generic road. And that was where Seb was kicked to death um, last year. So that was interesting seeing Kelly that. Kelly didn't do it. Kelly, Kelly did not do it because she is an angel, as we all know. Um, and the other interesting thing around there is if you... Um, like kind of like almost directly opposite the police station, you've got an extra kind of empty-ish car parking area, haven't you? And that's where I reckon probably the new precinct is going to be built. It seems like that's probably the only place it could be built, but also it does look very small, doesn't it? Yeah, but we've learned from the Shuttleworth's exterior that they can make things look bigger. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that's where it was. Yeah, um... And although they've said that building work has started on that precinct, there didn't appear to be any work that was done there, but equally there wasn't any work done no, anywhere else that would look like a precinct. It did look like they were building scaffolding in the shape of a precinct to me. Oh, did it? Yes. Oh, okay, fine. So maybe it is there then. Um, and, and I think they have used that in the past for filming other bits. Because if you look here... Oh, I can't... It's not a very good picture. Uh, it looks like there's... There's definitely a t- two, two layers. Two story thing. So yeah. I don't know, watch this space. I guess over as the summer goes on, the spring and the summer goes on, it's not going to be long before people go, no, it's definitely there. Because it's not supposed to be finished building until, what, November, December time. But yeah, in a couple of months, it will start to look quite precincty if that's it. And at one point, the tour guide said, oh, I don't know exactly where it is, but I reckon it's there as well. And, and I'd been thinking that. So that, that, that's, that's pretty much as good as it's going to be there. But I don't know, don't hold me to it. So... We went from there back onto Victoria Street, down past the community garden, past the EE shop. Now, we'd already taken some sneaky photos of that, hadn't we, while everyone else was down the police yeah. station. So we didn't take any photos. I just photos spent the whole then, time I running around. Taking yeah, you also took, yeah, pictures. lots of videos you were. Now, my, my camera ran out kind of just as we were entering... Um, uh, Victoria Street. Well, I'm sorry, the, my phone battery ran out, so I had to rely on Gemma to, to do all the rest of the photography after then. And then um, you kind of get then to the co-op, and again, on the last tour, that was where it ended, wasn't it? But this one, you got a little bit longer. He takes you down. But you can also look at, you take pictures of the gardens. Yeah. You can sit in Seb's garden. You can't sit in Victoria Gardens because it's a pretty dress set and there's lots of flowers and things in there that you could damage yeah yeah so you, you go out past the co-op and then kind of turn right go around the back of victoria street if you like and there's a and little then... mural on the victoria street on oh yeah um which you never see in, in the show i don't no. really think no and we you event anyway eventually you kind of end up circling back round again onto maudsley street is it the one with um eccleston and sons the uh the one that's through the the railway arch and he talks a little bit about um yeah the naming that that eccleston and son and the um, g hartzer engineering yeah they were named after long running um crew members on coronation street and you get to he, he talks about where the prop store is which is around there as well around the back of the medical center he talks about the fact that the maudsley street houses are now just facades which was what the original Coronation Street used to be. And he talked about Gene Alexander up a ladder looking yeah. through the through the windows Shout on Coronation people, Street. Yeah. And now I suppose if somebody wanted to lean out of a window and shout from Maudsley Street, not that that's ever happened, that's what somebody would be doing as well. Um, so that was done. And then you're kind of led out to the final bit, which is the shop. And this no. is... Oh, no. First of all, you go to the Tony Warren building. Oh, yes, I forgot about that one. We saw and, something new there. And he talks about... I think he talked about the fact that this is the hospital yeah, he exterior. Did. And... Yeah, the hospital exterior and, and sometimes then we uses saw fresh goes. An intriguing new addition. Oh yes, we did, we did. Which was I thought you a got... little a little kind of warehouse looking 
it's like corrugated place. iron sort and of place. And it's called Halal Northwest Retail and Wholesale Fresh Halal Meat and Poultry. Mm. Um, so this what was is just that built then? in the car park, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so I, I can only imagine that at some point in the near future, maybe Zidane or Alia are going to be going to get some of their halal meat, and then they'll go and meet it there. Uh, they'll go and or buy it there. Or maybe Zidane's new venture. Could be. Could be. We don't okay. know. Only as you know, I'm sorry if that counts as a spoiler. I don't think it was too much. I wasn't too disappointed to be seeing a halal meat shop. Um, no, exterior. I don't feel as though I've stumbled across a great revelation of any sort. No, sorry, we should have had a spoiler warning for that, but never mind. Um, yeah, then you go to the shop and there are two big tents there mm. and one of them looks like where they're keeping all of the wardrobe. Yeah, that was really interesting. We couldn't really see too much, could we? But it, there's just like racks and racks of characters um costumes and clothes and things all there that was really cool um it, it, it looked very temporary i don't really understand why it's there um but it was and then the second tent the one on the left that was the shop and that was where the organization of things started falling apart again a little bit didn't it yep do you want to as our as our you like to make ranter, me moan don't you? Well, you, you you're so much better at it than me well it it was very it the the whole the thing is it never emptied because of the turnover of people there are so many people going in um going into it the the first point to make is that once you, the tour is finished that's it the tour guide's like bye see you later here's a shop yeah i wanted you. to say goodbye to him but but we didn't well he leaves you and and so really if you wanted to there's no reason why you couldn't sneak on the back of another tour nobody looks at what color your wristband is nobody's really checking to see who you are the tour begins at the front, or like you said, of Viaduct Street, and that shop is opposite Viaduct Street. Hmm. So you could just join the back of a go round again, a, of a thing, and go round. It's like again. when you go to the cinema and sneak into another film after you, uh, into another screen after your film's finished. I'm not entirely sure that anybody counted us out when we left, so I don't know how they're knowing that they've counted in everyone in and yeah, out. They might have done, but they might have done, but they sneakily. did it in a very surreptitious way if they did. Um, so you're just left to your own devices because they want to make sure that you buy something in the shop. And and this was another improvement in my eyes to the old shop. Oh yeah, shop the shop was really Because it, it good. used to be that before, in, in the bit of, 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 over the bridge where, you, where it used to start, there was a couple of um, you know, bars of clotted cream and, and, and chocolate and pots of jam. Bar of clotted cream? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Fudge. It's fudge, I mean, clotted cream and fudge. And, and an old um, tour guide that was a hangover from the Key Street set, I think. Yeah. But this, there was actually a little bit more. Now, obviously, since the last time we did the tour, the ITV online store has opened. So with your, so you could get the things from there, like the, the aprons, the, um, the mugs, the tea towels and things. Plus there it was... It didn't have everything that was on... on it didn't have everything. It had nearly everything. Though. Yeah. I mean, there's not a load on the online store, no, to be isn't. fair. But they also had some extra things like pencils, rubbers, you know, classic school trip sort of stuff. They had... Pencil sharpeners, thimbles, rulers. £4.25. Rulers, £1.50. Wallets, £3.95. Torches, £3.75. Pencil, 75p. Pens, £1.50. A wooden magnet for three pound fifty. Erasers seventy five p. Sharpeners a pound. It was pretty decent stuff. They also you know, had for, for a gift shop. Rovers return glasses. Oh, yeah, they had, which they had was Newton good. and Ridley pint glasses, didn't they? they we, had, we bought a couple of them. Um, they had an umbrella. They had a hat. Baseball caps ten pounds. Beanie hats ten pounds. Umbrellas twelve pound fifty. See, what I don't particularly like with this sort of merchandise is stuff that says the tour on. If I want a Coronation Street pencil, I want one that just says Coronation Street, not Coronation Street the tour. I'm not a fan of Coronation Street the tour, as lovely as it is. Um, but there, there was a mixture of stuff, wasn't there, of Corrie and stuff like and Corrie tour stuff. A bunch of food items that yeah, had they, bricks slapped on they them. They still had the, the tatty jam and... Um, £2.95 for and strawberry stuff. or marmalade. Strawberry yeah. jam or marmalade. Chocolate chip shortbread. Four pound ninety five. Yeah. Now we bought a job lot of some of these things, so keep an eye out on Twitter, I guess, at some point in the near future. Only little trinkets. Yeah, yeah, just you know, pencils and just stuff. Just for fun. We we will be giving away some of um some of the things that we bought there, some kind of competition or something. And um, you went outside, didn't you? While while I was yeah. joining the queue. And the part of the problem with the queuing system is that there was a big long line that was blocking access to quite a few of the, the items line, that were on sale. And the thing is about queues is that they do spontaneously generate and it's, they're not within the control often of the shopkeepers. Mm. But they they the, the queue that, that spontaneously appeared went across the, the mouth of the entrance of the shop and down the side of where all the main 
merchandise was instead of the obvious place, which would be along the other side that didn't really have anything. Mm. Um, so that was annoying and silly. And also there were only two people on the till. Yeah. And so there was a massive long queue and they definitely lost sales because a few people went, I can't be bothered to queue up for, for a pencil. Yeah. Um, and I think that the, they were doing photo sales and yeah that that would slow things down a little bit you know like when you go to the theme park and you say i want to have a picture of me going wow on a ride and you have to scroll through all the pages of people going wow to say that's me and but there was there was that as well out as well and so everybody's waiting for that so that was silly yeah so i i got to uh, eventually to to, to the queue and i was handing out all my pen i was like i got 13 pencils i got 12 pens i got eight rubbers um and 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 then the person behind me was like he, he, he got a special occasion. You, any any reason why you're buying a lot of these? And I was like, oh, yeah, I do a Coronation Street podcast. Oh, really? That's really interesting what it's called, Conversation Street. And then the girl next to her on the till goes, oh, Conversation Street. I follow that Twitter account. Oh, that's really... And I was like, yeah, that's me. And she's like, oh, that's brilliant. Now I need to listen to the podcast. And the other person serving me said, oh, I need to listen to the podcast. Well, I hope they're not listening to this. Well, no. I mean... Everybody who worked there was great. They were. They were lovely. They were all friendly It was and just lovely. the general organisation of, them... of the way that yeah. it was put together. A lot of them were doing the really best. hard work. With a smile. Yeah, and they were all really friendly and lovely. There was nobody that was in a grumpy mood or no, anything. No, not at nobody all. Nobody put a dampener on on it. It was just they were they seemed to be fighting against their own management. Mm. And at the end of the day, Completely they only need to keep it like this for a little while anyway. I don't honestly know, don't think that a... any of this feedback is going gonna to change anything because I don't think they care because they're waiting for the, the new, new visitors section. To, and once that gets built, it will iron out a lot of the kinks because you're going to be probably entering the sector there. You'll be queuing in a bit of a more obvious place, maybe. Because mm. um, when, when you leave... The security hopefully will be better. When you when you leave it and kind of... Well, we saw it on the way and on the way back, just outside the bit where they filmed Kelly having a pint of beer poured over her head last yeah. year. Ah. Um, you, you got oh, your scaffold... Oh, poor girl. Poor Kelly, poor <laughs> Kelly. Um, you got your scaffolding up, haven't you? And, yeah. and, and you can peek in and see a little bit, but not too much. This is where they're going to have like a rover's frontage and you'll be able to go inside and have a bar that's open from like, what, eight in the morning till 11 at night. Well, that's what they have that's asked what they, That's for. what they've asked for. And then there'll be the proper Coronation Street shop in there. And when you do the tour, then you'll be able to see some interior sets. So it's going to be a heck of a lot better. Very similar to the Key Street one, I guess, had Hopefully. been. Hopefully. I hope they don't put the price up because although, um, although I felt that I absolutely got a much, much better deal for our money this over time. over twice as long. Yeah, it was over twice as long. I don't think that they should be trying to push to charge more just to go inside the inside sets because the, yeah, the Key Street one was cheaper than this and you got to see a lot more there. So we went in, we got in, um, we were let into the set tour at 11.17 mm-hmm. and we finished at 1pm. Yeah, it was a really, really decent tour. I left there feeling very satisfied and happy. It was lovely that it was a nice day. There were a few little... Um, organisational uh, blips. blips that were a bit of a shame didn't particularly bother me once we started going really but um, I had a really really nice time it was so good that we were able to freely explore the street this time tour guide was great very knowledgeable also something I haven't mentioned at all yet which was a really nice little extra there um, I met somebody that I knew um, Andy Steele who you might remember from I think last year I interviewed on the podcast now he was a Hashtag Cory Superfan, who was also used to be a um, tour guide on the old Coronation Street set, just so happened to book a tour at the same time as us, didn't he? And I was, he, he was one of the people that when we went to the back entrance of Coronation Street and there were people there also there and we were like, no, it's not here. I looked over and I was like, I, I, think, I think that's Andy, but I didn't say anything. I was a little bit nervous, but eventually once we got onto the street itself, I kind of walked up and was like, Andy, and we had, we had a hug and a chat and everything like that. So that was really, really nice that, um, yeah, somebody that we had, that we knew, that we knew, and we had, you know, been made acquaintances through the podcast and through his Facebook group as well that I was actually able to see in real life. So hello, Andy. I, I'm sorry it's taken me too long to mention you, but I was very happy to see you. Yes. Um, and, and that was it for the Corrie tour. We, uh, we, we exited the way we came in. We went round, we saw the, it the building work so on the outside. It would have made so much more sense to get people to exit out the other entrance. I guess it's just more security count them that's in and needed, out. isn't it? But well, who's counting them out? Well, Nobody. May, may, maybe they were. I was really, really desperate to swipe some of the other um, wristbands, but I didn't. I was good because they had lots of different colours there. I'm not a major fan of Sky Blue, and that's the one that we got. I know, all I've heard since we come out of it. I, 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 I wanted a purple 
sky blue toy. I wish we were in a different colour. It was funny because before sure they, we'll get a when we colour. went before, they give you lanyards, didn't they, on yeah. the old one? And this was a little wristband that, that tied up with a little toggle. And uh, I couldn't get mine off. I wore it for the rest of the day. And you had to end up cutting it off with scissors, didn't you? Because yeah. the toggle was stuck. So that was a bit sad. But um, yeah, we, we went well, there. We have um, mine. Oh, I don't thanks. care. Thank oh, I wear it every day. <laughs> I never wash my wrist again. Um, What's so, new? So, so that was that. And, and then we, it was almost... The, by then it was, it was early afternoon and we had a long journey ahead of us but we had agreed with Charlie DeMello that we would have to give him his full title not girl Charlie <laughs> not Charlie Jordan no not girl Charlie um, we, we said we would have lunch with him so we gave him a ring um, and we, we drove um, back into into Manchester and, and met up with him and we had a nice nice lunch together in a trendy another panini I had another well, I panini had, it was like a grilled cheese sandwich and you had a breakfast sandwich yes it was very nice it was like a a, a canal side trendy hangout yeah where everyone was far too trendy to say oh are you charlie Demello? can i get a photo with you please no um so we, we just in fact the the by far the most attention was given to your very beautiful um little pup oh yeah there was a, there was a nice little doggy there, charlie we were there. both going ah! <laughs> yeah that but was we, cool we didn't we so we, we stayed with charlie for another couple of hours then didn't we <laughs> Um, well, I don't just, think it was a couple of hours, but we I had we oh, no, me and Tony both had an aubergine parmesan, yes, uh, grilled cheese, and you had a bre- you don't even know what was in yours, do you? Um, it was it was like a fried Breakfast. egg and maybe a bit of hash brownie thing and some bacon. I don't know, it's very very nice. Um, well, can I just say to you, a hash yes. brown and a hash brownie are two different things. Sorry, it wasn't a hash brownie. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that trendy a place. <laughs> Charlie took <laughs> just it to this really it was cool next to a place. canal. It wasn't actually Amsterdam we were in. Um, no, and then then we were done. So we drove back to the car, said goodbye to Charlie, got in the car, and then we had our long drive back, didn't we? But I don't think people particularly want to hear about that. We stopped off at Dad's house on the way back, and then got to when did we get back here? Like half nine or so in the yeah. evening. So it was a long old drive, but like I said at the beginning, it it felt a lot closer than I thought it was, and it certainly made well, me think, hmm, maybe we could if you know if we can afford it or whatever, go out there more often. And well, it was we so, spent a lot of money. Spent a lot of money because the petrol's expensive. Oh, well, the food. Bloody hell, petrol's bloody expensive at the moment, isn't it? One hundred and sixty-five p per whatever you serve petrol. One hundred and eighty-five on the motorway. One hundred and eighty-five is mega expensive at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I had such a lovely, lovely time. It was so nice I to be don't able to think switch we off need from work. To stay at the Dakota again, either. probably not. There was a premiere in nice. just around the corner was um, nice. that was probably do just as good a job. But it I don't feel like it was the amount of money it yeah. cost. Nice. I had a really, really lovely time. The play was great. I, yeah. I must admit that when I went there, I thought, am I, am I going to enjoy? It? Is this going to be a bit arty I was farty thinking to for myself, me? But Michael was not, not much of a play person. But not. I had a fantastic time. So nice to see Sally and Matthews again, think... who was the original Coronation Street star listener of Conversation Street. Um, Along with she... Adam, please. Well, yeah, no, yeah, no, but Sal was the first person to get in touch with us, wasn't she? From from well, from yeah, that's right. We um, to the podcast. We we uh, what's the word? What did we do to him, Adam? We, we, we grabbed him. Grabbed him and dragged him into our little group. We did. We grabbed him into, and put so him in the car. That's what happened. Do you remember? We did. We, did. we, we spoke to Adam and put him in the car. car. We had a chat with him. Yeah, we a held a him hostage in our car. Yeah. And he's like, let me go, please. No, we must interview you. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and so, so that was really nice. So nice to speak to Sam. And it's Millie... still the same car. No, it's not. It is. Is it really? Yeah, it it's is. The same car. Um, Millie Gibson was an absolute delight. I was so I, I, it was a nice surprise. We we went there knowing that we were going to meet up with Charlie for quite a long time, and we and we yeah. chat with Sal afterwards. But yeah. Millie was an unexpected delight. Aww. Very very lovely person. She was just considering that she didn't know us from Adam really. She was so she, friendly. She, she she knew of our Twitter account, and that was about it. She yeah. was just yeah. She just. She talked to us absolutely normally. Yeah. So, so, so friendly and lovely. And her mum, Paula, was lovely. Absolutely. Um, Charlie, I mean, what can we say? He's a he's a very good friend of ours anyway, but it's always... we, we hadn't. This is the first time that we'd been up to Manchester for like a year and a half, wasn't it? From that yeah. two-week one. So, and we, and we, hadn't, oh, yeah. we hadn't seen, you know, Charlie or Sal since then as well. So it was so nice being able to oh. catch up with them again. This is one of sure, the best things be... about doing the podcast is the friends you meet along the way. Yes, yes. All of our lovely listeners and all of the lovely people who work on Coronation Street. Yeah feel so it was, privileged it was so so lovely and, and it won't to... be it will not be a year and a half again until we go to manchester i'll tell you that 
Um, no. And the, the, the tour was so much better than I remember it being last time. It wasn't perfect, but I had a really, really nice time there. Lovely day. Took lots of photos, which were gradually kind of... Um, uploading uploading onto onto instagram and twitter so keep your eyes out for that maybe we'll put some videos up of um because Gemma spent you, you pretty much videoed the whole of the tour didn't you it was very you couldn't the thing is you couldn't do a proper full walkthrough of the set because it was broken up into chunks but i think i filmed almost every part of it um as quickly as i could also trying to avoid reflections Oh, well done. Which would give the game away somewhat, because I am actually a giant purple dinosaur. <laughs> and I don't want you to find out. You weren't purple. You were wearing black that day. You had a, you had what? A, I always wear black. You had a t-shirt with, with a cat on that said vampire. Yes. I remember. <laughs> I only have. I've realised that pretty much, I'd say 90% of my t-shirts are either Halloween or Christmas themed. <laughs> they are, they are. Well, you've you got a Christmas one yeah, at the I moment, do. haven't you? It yeah. says, next turn for Christmas trees. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> it was a re really, really nice. And if any anyone is, you know, in the area, you still got a few days left to go and see Vignette Please at the go and see Theatre. It. Go and see it. Go and support our Sal and 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 it's the, worth the other Cory related it's people. That really are there. good. There are some really good yeah um pieces and some bloody amazing performances. Yeah. There. Yeah. If you think you might not like it, go anyway because I I was I I didn't know what to expect. I'll say that. Coronation Street tour. If you're thinking of going to that, I would still say hold off, because it's going to be brand new. You know, a new section opened of it in June, July time. It's not been officially announced yet, but there is kind of we we know that it's happening. And on the Cory tour itself, it says you know I think June new sections open. I I don't honestly think it's worth going now if you think you'd like to see this new bit going. It's just a few more months to hold off, and obviously at the end of the year you'll have the precinct bit, which will be a new bit. Um, I don't know whether I can wait that long before I go again, to be honest. And we do have the 10th anniversary of the podcast coming later this year. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a great, great, great weekend. And it was lovely to be able to, to share pictures and you know, see people's reactions on Twitter and everything. Everyone was excited for us that we were going. And um, oh, lovely, 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 lovely weekend. And I don't think I've got anything else to say. You got, you got anything else you want to add about it? Concluding no, thoughts? The only thing is I would say is that I feel so lucky... And I feel like um, I'm so chuffed and I really am grateful because it's down to everybody listening um, who have made it possible that we can do stuff like this yeah. so we can talk to you about it and also to people who work on Coronation Street and also the, to the Coronation Street tour guys and everybody works who works on there. I slammed, I slammed the organisation that needs work on it but it's so lovely to be taken on a tour of the street by people that genuinely fans of the show love it want to share their knowledge um everyone's happy everyone was having a great time yeah they were and, and except for one <laughs> I, I don't i think i'm gonna to have to take the audio out of some of the videos i took because there were three women who were having a massive fight with each other about putting people's cardigans on a push chair <laughs> and there was a mum and I think two daughters and a baby who was one of the daughter's babies and the mum was going please don't ruin this for me please don't please don't <laughs> so if you're out there I hope your day got better, got after, better that after that because you were getting a bit the, the other thing that I would want to say about the crowd as well is you know we we were kind of we, we'd done the set tour a number of times now we're very lucky we've been on the official set tour we've had some behind the scenes set tours um charlie and and connor have taken us on there before so we we, we we've done it before it wasn't new to us but the people who it was clearly new to they were having a great time and some of the facts that were being said by the tour guide there was some genuine like gas of amazement and they were laughing at all the right places and yeah the, the tour groups were just having a really lovely time so um thank you to all the tour guides who um we do what they can to, to make it so lovely and memorable for the Coronation Street fans. But I think that's about it. We've, we've gone for over an hour now. I think that we've um pretty much said all we need to say and, and, and showed how much we had a lovely, lovely weekend. So um, unless you've got anything else to say, Gemma. I think I've tried to end we'll this end about it. four times now. Yeah. OK, well, we're going to have tea now anyway. We're going to have a takeaway tonight because our, our shopping order didn't come. So hey, curry for us. So um, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye again. <laughs>